broadcasting live out of a basement in Appleton, Wisconsin. You're tuned in to Fox City's Core on WCZR Code Zero Radio. We're the show that gives you an opportunity to call in and be a part of the show. Our call in line is 920-358-0795. Core. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Fox City's Core. If this is your first time tuning in, WCZR is an independent streaming rock station based out of Appleton, Wisconsin. We're typically live every Saturday morning at 9 a.m., but today we've got a special show. I'd like to introduce my panel. We've got Jamie from the band Sweet Talk. Jamie recently won Vocalist of the Year at the BAMI Awards up in Green Bay. We've got Lacey from Trash Pandas. Lacey also, her band won a BAMI for Hard Rock metal metal believe it or not <laughs> metal and we've got andrew summers from the band tuck and tuck has been uh doing an, another album teasing another album that's coming out uh, sure very is. shortly yeah. so what we have today is a kind of a different setup from what we typically do how we're going to do this is we are going to just kind of talk about the scene and kind of have a freewheeling conversation and hopefully people will get something out of it maybe we'll get some questions Let's start out by talking about the Bammies. We're kind of talking about awards and things like that. And the fact that we've got two Bammy award winners down here right now, male vocalist of the year, which is pretty, pretty awesome. Yeah. And how did that feel to win that? Um, surprising, I guess. <laughs> I mean, I went in there not expecting to win at all. I was just happy to be there to, and, and just to check it out. Um, you know, and a lot of the other nominations, you know, I knew of them, so it was kind of nice to to meet them and and uh, get a little more personal with them. But um, yeah, winning it was was not an expectation, I guess. It was just nice to be there. It's one of those things where I think the in the moment, it you don't really know what to do, or you just kind of go on autopilot. Do you wish you could have done anything differently, knowing now that you're going to win? No, I think if I would have prepared for it, it would it would have came out worse. Hands down. Um, yeah, I, I, I think shooting from the hip uh, most times in that case is, is usually pretty good. It goes over well for me. Like any of our stage bands or whatever, none of it's really, you know. We don't have a routine. You just kind of go up there and read the room and go from there. As far as networking at that event, did you get to meet anybody you didn't know before that? Um, there were a couple of the, the older um, musicians from the scene that I wasn't aware of um, that were nominated for some of the awards that I, you know, it was nice to familiarize myself with. So, and, and they don't, you know, necessarily play some of the same gigs in the same clubs that we do, so being able to put, like, a face to the name was, was nice. And Lacey, when you, when you won, what was that feeling like? You had a picture of one of your bandmates. I think everybody was there except one, one yeah. member of the band. Yeah, our guitarist, Curtis, is... Um a tax accountant so he's in his very busy period you know during that time and he's like oh sorry guys i can't make it so i was like oh we'll bring a picture if we win we'll bring it up with us and uh yeah so that was that was funny to most people i guess um but i don't know winning was cool but once again like we were nominated for three of them and that was the one we didn't expect to win and that's the one we won <laughs> and then you've got some nominations coming up for the whammy awards yeah, um, so myself as a vocalist and the full band are both finalists in the hard rock category, so I hope they didn't vote for me. I hope they <laughs> voted for the band. <laughs> and um, our drummer, Derek Foytek, is also up for drummer of the year. Are you going to attend the, the award ceremony? Yeah, we got our tickets. We're going to go do it. <laughs> nice. And Andrew, like you've been involved in uh, the sound uh, a sound business up in Green Bay. A wee bit. Um, yeah, which which one? <laughs> Am I allowed to say it? Oh, yeah, yeah, go for it. Uh, Lighthouse? Yeah. And yeah. Um, sorry, go ahead. What was, what was the question? <laughs> I already forgot what it was. So as far as doing and working for this Lighthouse, mm -hmm. you've done things, I'm sure, like award ceremonies, worked them, and now all of a sudden you're going to be gunning to be on the other side of that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think if we've ever done a whole lot of award shows. Um, some of the more like corporate-y things we used to do. Um, not as much, uh, but yeah, now that I'm with a different company, 
camera corner. It's a lot more like install -y stuff, so a lot less live event things. So yeah, I'm kind of looking forward to maybe in the future making it to, to one of those. Definitely have something to, something to shoot for. And if people aren't familiar with, with Tuck, you kind of did things a little differently as far as how you started the band. You were working at Lighthouse. Yep. And so you're s surrounded by a lot of people that were into music. You ended up recording an album all by yourself, played all the instruments, recorded it yourself, and then put it out and then assembled the band yeah. afterwards. Yeah. Did yeah. a very, very backwards way to do that. <laughs> Would not suggest. <laughs> well, and then you also had the ability to do things like you had a nice big setup, um, a pro setup, and you yeah. played through the album and you were able to do that a few times and have it live streamed. And so things on a big scale early on. Yeah. Like how did that, like, did that give pressure or put pressure in place that normally wouldn't be there if you were kind of building up by playing clubs first and then getting the opportunity to do something big like that? Yeah, good question. I think I think it would have been easy for people to get that expectation like, oh, you came out the gun doing that? Like, so you're going to keep doing that, right? So I, um, early on, I, I forget who I was talking to. It was like, yeah, how do we scale this down to bring it to the clubs, the bars, the, the little things like that? Um, and I just, it, it, in writing some of the music, it's like, how is this going to translate in different areas too? I think, it's, especially with the newer album, I think a lot of the stuff works in a more skimmed down, um, not so production-y kind of a way. Um, but yeah, it is kind of tough to to play some of the big, the smaller shows and be like, if we're going to play the, we're going to have to bring the same energy here as we do than when we have all of the crazy lights and the tracks and the whole production bit of it. Yeah, it's it's a little tough. Now question for Jamie and Lacey. How, when you guys started playing, it was kind of the opposite thing. It was starting in small, small clubs and, and building up from there. Uh, the, when you started the band, was it based around songs that you were writing, or, or did you join a group of people and then start the writing process at that point? Um, for me, like I had written like notebooks of lyrics and stuff. I was looking for the right people to kind of you know bring that to and write with. Um, so the you know musical side of that came too when I met the people I was going to work with. Um, so part of it was written, but not most of it. Yeah. Uh, similarly, like we, I had a, a friend that we kind of both got plugged into the Green Bay scene at, at once. So it was you know, more or less like, a, all right, we have to find other people to play with. Like we, you know, we had song ideas and some riffs. Um, but, you know, through networking and finding other bands, like you find people to play with. And it's kind of how it started from there. We, we started playing basement shows. Um, and kind of worked our way up yeah and what would you say was the the hardest part about getting to the next level getting out of the basement uh being subjective about your band um or, or trying trying to you know self-edit write better material that's going to translate um and knowing what your limits are too you know i think that's that kind of helps you find your niche and you know, find other bands that are like like minded, and you can formulate better shows that way too. I feel like really intense so far. Like this is overly serious yeah. so far. Sorry, <laughs> <You're> like, relax. <laughs> Real. You need to relax just a little bit here. So, as as far as like the the challenges of of starting a band, all three of you truly love music, and at least that's how it comes off to me. Um, the the awards are one thing, and then. Did you guys, and this is for Jamie and Lacey, get any pushback from when you guys won the Bammies from people that maybe didn't think you deserved it or were upset that, that they didn't win? Not yet. I mean... <laughs> I really hope not. God damn. I mean, that's like kind of tough, right? Because you're, you're accepting praise, but at the same time, I think we've all been in the, in the boat where somebody wins something and you're like well that should have been me or you know, i mean like, everybody feels yeah. like that sometimes but i mean for us um 
I didn't hear any pushback, but I'm sure, like, there's people talking about it. Because, like, we've been, you know, told by people, like, we should not play these kind of festivals or these kind of shows because we're not metal enough or you're not Ugh. punk enough or something. Like, we're yeah. very, very in between on our sound. So, like, winning metal band of the year against these really hard bands like Choke and Macabre, it's like, I'm sure there's people that were, like, not thrilled about that, but... I feel that big time, like, the <laughs> what you just said, like, being, like, an in-between band. Because mm-hmm. yeah. it, it varies so much on, you know, what you listen to, what the listener listens to. Right. As, you know, that affects their impression of you. You know what I mean? So if they listen to death metal all the time, then they're going to look at us, and we've been on bills. We've been, like, the Yacht Rock Right, and, right. Uh, <laughs> you know, we could we 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 played shows with Choke and Macabre, and it's like, yeah, we uh, we don't go that hard, but <laughs> you know, compared to someone who is yacht rock, maybe we are death metal. Well, but, the, yeah. <laughs> you know, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. It, it's just no. It's, some some shows we play, we're the lightest band, and some shows we're the heaviest. Like we, it it depends who's on the bill, but yeah. that's kind of the cool part about like being in between is you can play with anybody. <laughs> You can play with any kind of bands. Well, maybe not like country, but you know. <laughs> oh, hell yes. yeah! Yes. <laughs> well, you know, there there is a, a country artist named Boy Howdy who would would say that he'll he'll play with any genre, and, yeah. and he's the king of country. So that's mm-hmm. something to be said there. It, it's interesting, and, and I think you kind of touched on it a bit. But people's thought of what is heavy is because somebody yeah, I might call hear trash pandas and, or talk or sweet talk and say well that's a metal band mm-hmm. when in, in my mind like metal is joke right. you know so mm-hmm. um it could be something like motley crew and somebody would say that was metal yeah you know what yeah. i mean like it's Absolutely. just it, at a time yeah so it's just it's weird when you also when you're categor categorizing i guess like awards because it, it is tough you can't make everybody happy and right I, yeah i mean to kind of to add to that like there's people that come up to us after gigs and uh I'm sure it happens with your bands too. But they they say, "Oh, you sound like <laughs> Chevelle. You sound like Deftones." It's like it. I mean, I could see the parallels, but it says more about you as a listener than it does us as a band. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, people always try to find some female singer to compare me to, and they they usually don't do a very good job of it. Like I've been told Gwen Stefani, which I can sort of see, and then there's like some guy that was like, "Oh, you sound like Amy Lee," and I'm like, "I am not." A soprano. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so it's more based on the fact that you're female and these are other females. Oh, yeah. So. Like, everybody always goes to, like, oh, you guys have to be, like, Paramore or you have to be, like, Evanescence or something. And I'm like, I don't think we sound like them at all. Who would you think you sounded like? Um, See, that's a hard one because we, <laughs> our genres change around so much. Um, Like... My favorite vocalist of all time is Mike Patton, and he's nice. in a million projects. And so, like, there's there's been a handful of people that compare me to him performance style, which is always very flattering, but I'd say we're a little bit more like a Patton project because we don't have a specific genre. He's in, like, a million projects, and he's got, like, a million different voices. Yeah, he's amazing. <laughs> like, he does crazy. things you've never heard. <laughs> Yeah, you went to see, was it Mr. Bungle? Mr. Bungle, yeah. yeah. I finally got to see them, so that was super cool. Sorry. They got, like, the all-star band right now, too. They got, like, all these big star musicians that came and joined the band. So it's not the same lineup as when they were, like, in high school, but it's really cool to see that. Now, the main component, of course, is Mike Patton, right? Yeah, I mean, so. he's huge on the music writing a lot of it comes from his mind and then he just brings other people in to work with him well, here's a, a tough question for you guys but that's what we're here for yeah. you're all front people of your bands do you feel that the pressure that you have more pressure on you being front and center do you feel there's more pressure on you than on the rest of the band I thought you said you didn't want this to be serious <laughs> <laughs> well and then asking in kind of a, a non-serious kind of way it's yeah. just because I mean, I don't think like I've I've heard bands before, like I'll just say a drummer or you know bass player or whatever. Um, you know, you guys don't understand what it's like to do this or do that. You know, my hand hurts. There's something, but it, I think being yeah. a front person is kind of a unique situation because uh, typically people are going to be watching whoever is singing the lyrics. So it it's just in, and if you don't have an opinion on it, it's fine. But just yeah. wondering if you feel there's more pressure on. I think it's more of a case of like you have to be, uh, 
empathetic of like the the musicians around you that are also on stage like they have their own challenges too so it's hard to be you know to put yourself in their shoes when you have other responsibilities too but they have their own as well like i can't sit behind a drum kit and play you know the things that brian does in our band i can't do that like that's not me that's that's all him you know and when we play shows he's he's driving the car so to speak so there's there's a lot of pressure on him so yeah there there's definitely some pressure on me you know, to be kind of that person in front of the crowd. And we're not like a, you know, like you brought up Motley Crue, like not like a Vince Neil kind of a guy out there wearing assless chaps and trying to entertain people. You know what I mean? Like I'm up there, Wait, I'm up there the playing a part. Is that not what we're supposed to be doing? Uh, I, I got to change it up for the show next week. I didn't understand the assignment when it came to that. But, uh, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it, everybody has their own pocket of pressures when they're up there too and they're not necessarily thinking about yours either so yeah. yeah i mean you get a specific sort of pressure being like the center of attention with it but you know everybody has a job that's just as important up there so i always tell them i have the easy job you know i think the instruments are a lot harder than than doing the vocals but i guess the hardest part of it is having to be the face you know talk to everybody and um try to come across as the way that you should you know because i don't know i'm kind of a shy person like outside of my performance i'm a completely different person on stage so it can be hard to small talk with every single person at the bar that night but that kind of falls on me they'd they'd rather talk to me than the guys usually yeah yeah there is i don't know if it's so much like the pressure um because yeah you are in a lot of instances i feel like you are the face of the band so there comes a lot of expectations of kind of like what you were saying like are you the same person on stage mm-hmm. as you are when you're by the merch booth just trying to sell your stuff um and then i feel like what i've learned in the last couple of months is you naturally become the leader of the band and you have to like you just become the one to make a lot of the tougher decisions i don't right. know if you guys no absolutely kind of run yeah. into that too um so yeah there's there's some added pressure but then i think there's on the other side of that going yeah, and I'm the one in front of the crowd, and you like, you feel like the the crowd energy reaches you first mm-hmm. uh, before everybody else. And I don't know if that's a big-headed thing to say or not. Um, so yeah, there's there's the pros and the cons to it, but I think the the cool parts outweigh the the expectations or the responsibilities per se. Well, you, you brought up uh, are you the question of are you that same person you are on stage as you are off. The last time we were like, we were here as a full band doing the interview, I won't name the name, but there's a, there's a guy that owns a, a venue in town. He's like, I watched your interview. I thought you guys would be slamming beers and talking about chicks. Like, we're not we're not those people. Like we're not the, we're not those people on stage either. Like, yeah, that's kind of that's confusing to me. <laughs> yeah, that's so. No, uh, I think some people sometimes think like maybe we're not the most friendly band just based on the fact that we don't want to go out and drink afterwards and you know party and stuff like we like to talk to you at the show but we're there to do our job and then we go home and we sleep yeah, <laughs> like it's, we're just a little bit introverted for a group <laughs> that's a great like thing to bring up because after a show yeah people hey let me buy you a shot and they want to hang out with you if they liked your band right and you, it's like I, I don't drink at all you know yeah. and people sometimes seem to be upset when i say no to them and it's it's I'm not trying to be mean or rude. It's just that's not my lifestyle, you know. It's definitely a thing. I mean, more around here, I guess, in this area. Like, you get a little bit further out, it's it's not as bad. But, you know, I, it's, it is definitely a thing where they want you to hang out. And, mm-hmm. you know, and I get that because there's camaraderie in it or, you know, whatever. They just want to just hang out with you and get to know you or and vice versa. Like, But at the same time, if you have five other shows after that one like and being a singer too like you oh, yeah. you don't want to sit there in a bar and be screaming over yeah. music like you're gonna lose it how do you're you not guys gonna be able to last. like how do you deal with it before a show when maybe you're the the headliner you're playing later in the uh, you know set of three bands or something and everybody's trying to talk to you during the the other band sets and you're kind of yelling to to talk back yeah. to try to stay out of the the venue or at least stay away from people before so that doesn't happen so your voice isn't totally blown out by your usually, set? Usually during setup is a good time to kind of make small talk with it, you know, with the other bands. I mean, as as bands are playing and people are coming in, it's a little different, but 
I mean, during the setup, it's usually pretty low key, pretty laid back. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, usually about like an hour before we go on, I'll go sit in the car. I do these vocal warm ups. I do this, you know, vocal spray stuff. I'll, I have a vocal coach I've been going to for about a year now, and it's all the stuff he suggests I do to, you know, before the show. So that keeps it easier to do. But yeah, I try not to be screaming at people <laughs> as much as I can beforehand. <laughs> I feel like there was one gig about a year or two ago. I learned it out of necessity uh, the week before I got like super sick and I didn't have a voice. Mm -hmm. um, and I was like, the day of the show, I'm still only at, at about like 60%. So after sound check, I remember my the front of house guy we got, he's like, you're gonna go up to the, to the green room, you're gonna shut the hell up for the next two hours. <laughs> um, and it sucks, cause like, yeah, I'm the guy who wants to talk to everybody and make sure everybody else is feeling good. Um, and every time, um, my, uh, my wife's like, shh, 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 nothing above like a whisper. <laughs> she was the one coming, shh, I was like, no. mm -hmm. I so, got so many colds this year and we'd be driving to a gig and Derek, Derek's just asking me all these questions and I'm just like nodding. I'm like, I, I really got to save what I got, dude. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's hard. It's hard too, because the, the flip side of that is like when you're trying to save your voice, you don't want to come off as a dick. Right? No, you don't. You, you, have, you have to talk to people, yeah. but at the same time, it's like. If we sit here and have this conversation while the band's playing, like, our set's going to go up there and be terrible. Mm -hmm. Or at least, you know, from a vocal perspective, it yeah. could be. There's kind of like a, I think you said, you have to think about this as your job. Like, your voice right. is your job. You playing is your job. So like, I'm here to do this, and if I have any, any energy left before or after, I'll gladly use it. But, well, yeah, there's that fine line of, okay, at what point am I just being a dick? I imagine, I, you know, I'm obviously not a drummer, but I imagine drums would be the same way. Like, your body is kind of your instrument, same thing. You have four limbs doing four separate things. And with vocals, obviously, you know, you are making that noise with, with not, your body. Not that, that, that noise, noise. but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> A noise. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, it, it's just, there are little things you have to think about. Like, I mean, it, but it's a slippery slope, too. Like, you... you you don't want to go too nuts and start thinking about like, oh, okay, I'm gonna make all these dietary changes and I'm gonna do, you know, all these separate things before we play a gig. Like, you just, it's still just rock and roll. Like, just go up there and do the thing. Mm -hmm. Like, you don't want to put too much pressure on it or you'll choke yourself out. Yeah. How do you deal with it if um, maybe you rub somebody the wrong way and you see some, some bad post or something on Facebook? Has that ever happened or social media or hear from? somebody else that somebody said this or or that just let that drain off or does that stick with you um i mean there are things that have bothered me that i have seen but then you know when you think about it the groups that really aren't doing anything aren't getting any sort of feedback so like if somebody doesn't like you you're probably doing something right because they know you're out there <laughs> valid yeah mm -hmm. i think of that I, I don't know if we've ever received any bad like bad reviews or anything. Like if anything, I've, I've got it more through work. Um, and yeah, there's an amount of it that's just like, okay, it sucks that you think that you had to go out on the internet and say this thing. Like, I'm glad you, I, I hope you feel better about yourself. And yeah, there's just an amount of, you, you have to let it roll off or it just becomes debilitating. We've got a, uh, a question here from, I believe your wife, Ivy. Oh boy. <laughs> uh, the question is, Question for Jamie and Lacey. What was the process like to start networking networking with other bands to, to build a bill to actually book shows locally? It feels like booking locally in this area is quite difficult. Um, it is, yeah. It took a while to get my footing with that. Um, really what I did was I reached out to um, uh, Brant from The Sinner and the Saints because I knew him since college and he had an original group. I'm like, how do you do this? <laughs> and he gave me a couple band suggestions. He's like, hit these guys up, you know, look around for venues, see if you can build a bill, the venue will probably take you. So, you know, I just went with um, people I knew who had experience and um, got advice from them. And, and now you started in, and Jamie, I'll, sorry, <laughs> let's answer a second. You started off in a, a cover band before Trash Pandas, right? Or yeah, I did. I did a couple cover bands. Like I did one from uh, high school into early college, and then um, a college one for like a year, not very long, and then um, one that was just like people I found on Craigslist for a while. So, so I did several cover bands before I was able to find people that were interested in original. 
which was really what I always hoped to do. I always hoped to make the cover band turn to original music, but nobody ever showed interest in that, so. Congratulations on not getting killed off the, the Craigslist thing. Yeah. But, Thanks. But did, yeah. did you have any uh, any <laughs> any uh, success using your contacts when you were in the cover bands when you started Trash Pandas? Um, yeah. I mean, like, I don't think so much it helped me find musicians, um, but it did help me, you know, with places we've played before and um, people in the scene that know how to book shows, you know, things like that. It's even though it's not connected, it's connected enough that it was at least some footing to start on. Jamie, do you have any, uh, as far as Ivy's question? I kind of took a back door into like knowing people within the scene because the, the person I started the band with, he, he knew a lot of them already, you know, just by kind of going to shows and whatnot. And I wasn't really that, I mean, I'm still not that type of person where it's like, I, I want to go to the show, do the gig, and then, you know, obviously we'll stay around for the other bands and, and whatnot, but, like, I like to be at home, too. Like, oh, yeah. I, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, I wasn't really, like, the networking person in our band at that time, so I was kind of introduced to a lot of those people through him. Um, and Green Bay's always been kind of like a... There's always been at least one good spot to play, and if you can kind of get your footing in with that spot, you can usually kind of... If the writing's on the wall, you can usually see it coming, and, and there will always be another spot that will pop up and, and be the, the place to play. Um, when we first started playing gigs like 10, 11 years ago, um, the Lyric Room had just opened up. Oh, nice. And, yeah, um, shout out to Wilk because he gave Rip. our band Rip. and another band called Molly's Way from back in the day, they... Um, he gave us a chance to just play gigs there and you know before we had any sort of a following and he was just trying to get like a stage and a good PA and he was trying to get his footing and you know up and running with the lyric room too so if you can find your way into a situation like that or like what you're saying if you can build a bill and then go to a venue um, they're more likely to say yes to, to book your show then until you you know establish some sort of relationship and then you can ask the venue directly for dates um, and then you can kind of flip flop. You get the date, and then you can ask bands. Um, but it just kind of depends on who you know, really. Thank you for the the question, Ivy. It, so it it is it does seem like the it is who you know. It, yeah, <laughs> it definitely class. can oh, open yeah. Yeah. can definitely open doors. Hundred percent. But it it's a very good idea to to have a bill, like you said. That's a, a great idea. Have a bill and approach a, mm -hmm. a venue instead of just saying, "Hey, can I play there?" or "Can I?" Be you know, open for this. You know, contacting somewhere saying, "Can I open for this show?" Or mm -hmm. that's a good advice, I think. It's hard because I think, I mean, there are a lot of you know, if you're trying to play another city too, you know, not in the area that you're from, like you won't get the Friday night gig. Yeah. You won't get the Saturday night gig. Maybe you'll get something during the week, but you have to kind of build yourself up to that point, which is what a lot of people may not realize. You know, mm -hmm. you can't just book the the happening place on the perfect time slot and you know have it from day one you know, maybe if you're lucky but odds are you'll have to work your way up i remember being super excited to play the lyric room for the first time it seemed like really hard to get in there and yeah. then you know finally a band asked if we wanted to play with them and it was a shout out to the independent variable nice. thanks guys but yeah once we got in there it was easier to go back again but yeah. I, th I think when you're starting out it is hard to to figure all this out like where to go and i do you guys have opinions on the, the Green Bay scene in general? Crickets. It's a, uh. li <laughs> it's a, little, a little tough. Um, for us, we always feel like we get more people out in the like Fox Valley, Appleton, Oshkosh area. I don't know what it is about Green Bay. Green Bay loves their cover bands. Uh, a little harder. <laughs> <laughs> a little harder to get people out at your original shows and uh we do we do better now than we once did but we we've, we've nice. played some dead ones for sure yeah well um, i think we all we all have these stories to you know of playing almost empty places and yeah. <laughs> but 
You guys have those stories as well, I'm, I'm assuming? I don't think there's a band that exists that's ever played a show that yeah. doesn't have I don't, yeah. think, I don't think you're a real band until you play at a bar and there's three people and two of them are the bartenders. They <laughs> yeah, have to be and, there. And, <laughs> unless you're lucky enough to be the, the Slipknot Kids band, you know, yeah. uh, Vended, I think. You know, like, if if you have parents that get you out there, that's cool. But if, if you're starting at the bottom like us, oh, yeah, uh, yeah. you're, you're going to... Gonna play some bad ones. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Ma. Thanks for being here on a Tuesday night. Oh, it's your bedtime in ten minutes. Okay, bye. Right. <laughs> after after you know doing this for as long as you guys have, do you have places or certain establishments that you try to not play? Yeah, I mean, there's been places we've played that just never seem to have a crowd. Maybe it's location. Maybe it's just that people in that area aren't into the kind of music that we do you know but once you play something like three times and it's dead every time you probably don't want to go back <laughs> i think it i think it also depends too uh, like where you're at as a band because you can look at a lot of venues as being useful for different reasons you know if you're if you're just starting out and you're looking to just get a gig like some of those places that we may not play anymore might be you know useful to a band like that that's yeah. just trying to get their their you know their game together no when you're new you just play anywhere you can and pretty much yeah, <laughs> yeah. anybody that will respond back is like all right yeah we'll play stage is five feet by five feet great we'll <laughs> yep. be there right. so it's the, that that grind is is brutal and that's maybe back to the original questions like okay yeah how do you go from having the big old virtual crazy moving lights and pyro and whatnot and then go play billy bob's corner bar down in milwaukee it's a mm -hmm. two-hour drive and you're not even guaranteed to get paid again it's like mm -hmm. yeah because you just want to play in front of people right it, yeah it's like i said it just kind of depends on where you're at as far as a band goes you know what what step in some what what block are you at um in terms of you know are you just starting out or are you trying to play another city? If you're playing a new city for the first time, then, then you're kind of just starting out in that city mm -hmm. rather than you know playing the best place in wherever you're from. So you kind of have to look at it like all the venues have some worth to them. It's just managing expectations and realizing where you're at as a band, you know, and, and some of that is on the venue too, as far as like what bands they attract, what people they attract. If you want to have a show that starts at 10 PM, all the power to you, we won't play it. Cause I'm not I'm I'm telling you right now I'm done going on at one o'clock in the yeah. morning. Oh, that's like, so bad. There's yeah. no point to it. There's no point to it. I'm sure, we could name off a, a bunch of venues that don't start until Absolutely. ten o'clock. But you know what? Like, you know, there was a point in time when we would play that gig sure. no problem. Like we would we would have died to get into that place. And now you know at this point, like you, there are certain things you grow out of, certain things that you learn as you go. And you're like, okay, there's no way we could have learned this without doing this. So there's some things you just have to get out there and do and learn the hard way. Well, which, and, yeah, and as you learn, it, you realize you're not really losing that much by n turning down those gigs or not yeah. not playing those gigs. Because it comes it comes down to time too. You know, I mean, like we were kind of saying before you started taping, like we, you know, we're not only the people in the band, and that's all we do. You know, this this is one thing that we do with, in our life. It fills up a big part of our life and on a lot of time, but. It's not the only thing, so part of that, you know, kind of ties into juggling how you're how you're using your time. Like, it's a factor in deciding if you want to play a certain gig, if you don't want to, you know, how far are you willing to go to play a certain spot? I've got a couple of comments here. I've I've been falling behind on. Uh, Sal <laughs> Sal Spitz says, uh, <laughs> uh, "Big ass breakfast burritos from DD." FTW. I don't know what that means, but as far as <laughs> yeah, breakfast burritos. <laughs> as far as is eating, being a leading a band. Do you guys? Thanks for the comment because it gave me an idea. As far as leading a band, do you take a diet seriously? As far as keeping in shape, because doing this is is more physical than people think and I know Lacey you said you're taking like vocal lessons do you guys work out regularly and try to keep in shape so it's not so brutal the next day after a show I feel called out <laughs> um I wouldn't say that I do but my job is very physical so that sort of keeps me on top of that um I love my sugar I love my <laughs> junk food so 
that can be a little bit of a struggle, but I do try to eat as healthy as I can on show days because, I don't know, it's there's nothing like eating some big greasy sandwich and then going on stage and feeling like you're going to hurl, you know? <laughs> you got to check yeah. yourself a little there. <laughs> yeah. Even just the, I, I kind of figured this out about myself about a year or two ago, like the whole like pre-show celebratory <laughs> shot. Like right before you no. go on deck, like no, that's can't. not good for your voice either. No, like the the voice struggles, and then like I don't know if it's between the adrenaline and the like the those first like that first minute nerves combines with the booze just kind of puts me in this weird fog. So I've told myself I I can't do that before shows, um, but yeah, like you you wake up at a good time, make sure to go to bed at a decent time the night before. It's like yeah, there's a little bit of you have to take care of yourself like should i be doing that more than just like the day or two before the show like yeah but you know that's that's life yeah your, uh, your bandmate alan he uh, he asked when when are we gigging together i think he's talking about you two over there and then he said he's still taking shots but <laughs> 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 i mean you know what you, that's your bandmate yeah you can pick your friends, but you can, I guess you can pick your bandmates. <laughs> no, no, please. I know it. I can't pick them. <laughs> I feel like there's a bit of a caveat to that, though. Like, you know, how, how serious you take it, because it depends on, like, what style of music you're singing. You yeah, know? yeah. I mean, if you're, if you're going up there and, you know, keeping it pretty You're going up minimal. there. I mean, that's vo- male vocalist of the year. You've, you've got the falsetto going, and you, I'm really, like, impressed at Thank the you. vocal range. And that you don't do any training, right? Which none. Um, but I mean, it, it. Like I was saying, like it just it depends on what style you're singing. You know, what are your abilities, and and what are you trying to do? You know, and your technique too. That comes down to a lot of it. Um, yeah, like I said, I'm not trained at all. So a lot of it is just based off of feel and doing things the wrong way for a really long time, <laughs> mm-hmm. and then learning a little, you know, little bit by little bit of what works and what doesn't work. So it it all just kind of depends, but you know, I think generally watching what you eat and and doing some cardio or you know whatever, it, it's not going to hurt you, for yeah. sure. Have you guys ever been hurt at a show? Um, hmm, not really. Not no. physically. <laughs> yes, maybe emotionally a little. Bit. <laughs> ah, the emotional hurt. <laughs> That's when they get you. When you're when you're playing to the bartender and they aren't even paying attention, that that's a little hard. Um, <laughs> this is worse than any cut. I don't think I don't think any of us have been injured at a show. I've tripped on my mic cord a few times, but nothing bad has happened so far. <laughs> Our drummer's going through a serious streak of uh, after we set up, he looks down at his hands and he's bleeding from somewhere on one of his fingers. <laughs> like there's blood all over his drums. So what the hell happened yeah and he has no idea how it happens i'm just like i don't know how to help you <laughs> watch out for <laughs> yeah yeah i uh yeah i got a really awesome uh really awesome gash on my forehead literally on the before the even first song started uh from a from a light um yeah, and it took me until it's like the third or fourth song for me to realize that I was actually bleeding because I thought it was like sweat. I was getting into it, and like the red lights, like you know, I kind of wipe it. And I couldn't tell. That was gonna be my question. Did you finish the gig? Uh, yeah, oh yeah. yeah. That does that does remind yeah. me of something. When I was like eighteen, we had our first like lyric room show, and we were so excited. And uh, I still lived up in, in Crivets at that time. You know, we were gonna drive an hour down there, and me and my you know little teenage friends in the band were like yeah let's go and it was super icy outside and my mom was like oh hurry up we don't want to be late so i'm like running with all this shit in my hands and i just like wipe out and smack my chin on the ground and we were very lucky because um our guitarist's father was a physician assistant and uh i laid down on the couch he stitched me up and we went to the show oh amazing <laughs> you did the gig we did the gig that's awesome <laughs> we were uh, we we're going through our google drive the other day, we have all of our photos and videos and whatnot, and uh, I, f- I found a video from like a show we did last year at uh, some college house show up in Houghton, and uh, there's one of our guys like standing in front of me with his arms like this to keep people. It was it was the, the wild west in that living. There was a hundred drunk college kids 
and we're playing. I think at the time it was like uh, like Whiplash, Metallica <laughs> covers. Everybody's oh, yeah. you're trying to form a circle pit in a, in a <laughs> wood floored living room. There's people sliding all over the place. Like my pedal board's like over here now. Uh, like my <laughs> microphone's hitting me in the face. So like my one of my buddies is like standing there just trying to keep people off of us. We we're just doing like a three piece at the time. Um, oh yeah, tripping over cables. That's that. I don't even consider those injuries. Those those are givens. You're, that that's just gonna happen. Yeah. The good old fifty eight grill mark on your nose. Oh yeah, I hit myself in the teeth with my mic a oh, few yeah. times. You know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you guys ever been shocked before? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> some of oh. those some of those places oh, get a little oh, sketchy. Oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> the scariest part is when you feel it before it happens. Yeah. yeah. You get close to the mic and you're like, <laughs> I feel tingly. <laughs> yeah. What about hitting your teeth? On the, the yep. microphone. Uh-huh. Done it plenty of times. I, I'm a very active person up there, so I, I get a little too into it sometimes. I'm surprised I still have all my teeth. Yeah, Lacey, you're like, you're an animal up there. And Thanks. It, 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 <laughs> <laughs> so th- there's lots of pictures of you at online, which is, brings me to content. Andrew, you mentioned you're watching some old video. Do you guys feel pressure to, to get content all the time? And yeah. Just content, content, content. Every every day. Like, you know, even on my off days, I'm always working on the band. There's You have to be on social media to keep that attention coming in. Like, if you want to keep moving forward, you got to keep yourself present in the scene. And yeah. uh, some days it's there's nothing to talk about, but you make something up. <laughs> <laughs> so you feel you have to post just to kind of stay in front of people right right like you know there's not that you know a talent agent that comes out to shows anymore these days like you build yourself up with the social media and that's how you get attention unless you have like tons of money and can afford to get yourself on the radio or something you you have to put yourself in everybody's face as much as you can so how much is too much i mean like this is something that you know we we struggle to figure out too like what what is oversaturation you know you can only play you know the city that you're from so many times in a year within you know maybe once or twice a month you know um because then people are going to stop coming out if they can see you all the time too so yeah that part's hard because you don't want to just like say no to gigs but sometimes you gotta (laughs) And we're still figuring that part out a little bit, you know? We're still learning. It's a hard thing to figure out because, um, you know, like where we're from, this area isn't a primary market either. Mm-hmm. You know, Green Bay and Appleton, you know, as as great of a gig as you can have here and at a cool place and a venue and you can play with some really cool bands, like it's it's not like a, you know, stop number one. It's not a Chicago. It's not a right. even Milwaukee or Madison. Like yeah. this is kind of a bypass area, you know? If you're going on, if you're looking on a map, you're looking like, okay, we're gonna hit up Chicago, Milwaukee, and then we'll go over to Minneapolis. Like you, you kind of get bypassed. So when you go play bigger cities and you, you know, you ask bands to play shows with you, and you have to kind of realize that, like, okay, well, you have a secondary or a, you know some sort of tertiary market that you're offering in return. Like, so you have to be selective in what shows that you do play and. You know, if you're just starting out, you can get away with playing every weekend, in, you know, in Green Bay for a little while. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, as time goes on, like you have to be more selective. Like what, what Lacey was saying, like you, you have to pick and choose, which sucks because there probably be some shows that you do want to play that you have to pass on because you have other commitments or, you know, there's there is sort of an etiquette to it as well. Yeah, like I mean, we want to play it everything we're offered. We do like this is just what we love to do, um, but. You have to figure out a smart way to do that and which ones you can say no to. <laughs> do you ever feel bad, though, saying no? Yes. To yeah, friends, sure. because you, you build up those relationships. Also, oh maybe God, a yeah. friend messages you and they're saying, hey, can you can you play this gig with us? And then you have to say no, and then you know no. they take it as a personal insult. or They don't you know. call I, you out the next time. I don't <laughs> think that anybody has taken it as an insult, really, because, I don't know, um, they they realize that we're busy, you know, and that sometimes things don't work. But sometimes you'll end up with, like, one band that has asked you, like, five times to play a show. And every time you're like, I can't do it. And then you start to feel really bad. <laughs> Felt, it was about a year or so ago. We were, for whatever reason, we booked, like, three shows down in Milwaukee one summer. 
Um, and they were, they reached out to us, like these venues, like, hey, would you mind coming down? It's like, yeah, that first, those first two or three you get, like, oh yeah, absolutely. We'd travel two hours down to Milwaukee and for a gig we're not necessarily gonna get paid for, but we'll play <laughs> to a room of 100, 200 people. Yeah, absolutely, we'll do that. And then the fourth one comes around, you're like, you start looking at your, your bank account going, that's a lot in gas. And <laughs> we're all gear sluts at Tuck. We like having nice things and that costs <laughs> money. And my sweet water card is, I'm putting some kids you know, through college or something like that. But yeah, it's tough. Cause then what's also, what, what sucks about turning down those gigs is you do lose the content. Like all these awesome photos, all these videos, the people that share stuff on the Snapchats and the Facebooks and it, like you lose, you're not just losing a gig especially when you're first starting out you're also losing content you're losing that grab we probably get to know too like who takes the really good content so when you see them yeah. show up to a show you get kind of excited like well i hope this ends up online yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, but who is it that there's somebody that i forget his name he films shows he's done hundreds of them danger uh, his name is dan dan yeah. garretts yeah. Yeah. yeah uh i mean what how great is that i mean an yeah. unsung hero that i mean we're talking hundreds and hundreds of shows that he's filmed that he puts some you know a song or two on youtube yeah and oh yeah and he always sends me the video like mm -hmm. when he gets it too i've actually been friends with him a long time he used to do lights for one of my cover bands so That's yeah cool. he's a cool guy the, the, him and uh I can't remember if it's his sister or sister. Sister-in-law Barbie, okay. yeah, she's so sweet. <laughs> yeah, they're both super nice people. Yeah. So I mean, more more relationships, you know, built up with not only uh, non-band people, but people that are just involved in the scene. Because there's multiple ways to get involved in the scene. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be in a band. You can be a venue owner. Somebody that takes pictures or videos and posts them online. It, it's really an amazing community of people. It is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, we've got a question for Lacey. Um, <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Hi. This is uh, in-house uh, Bob Minter from Code Zero Radio. Bob, what's your question? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I had a question for Lacey. You just did a swing through uh, Des Moines, right? We did, yeah. Uh, you played at Lefties. We did. How was that? I mean, going in, you haven't played there before. No. And I've been to Lefties a bunch of times. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a pretty nice club. How was the crowd and how, how did you get received? And did you have to do a whole lot of promo for that? I mean, we did as much promo as we could. Nobody in Iowa really knows who we are. That was our first weekend there. Um, so I worked with um, a band called More Cheese. Um, <laughs> the, the drummer, Jared, <laughs> has come up to Wisconsin and played... Uh, shows with us before so I reached out to him to get that figured out and yeah. him and his wife Danny uh, who's also in the band got the whole bill put together you know um, where there were two out-of-town acts in the middle and then an opening and a closing act that were local um, so like it was a Sunday afternoon show you know that's when we happened to be there so it wasn't like it was super crowded but there were people that came out and um, we were received very well so awesome. I, I can't complain it's a good show. That's a, that's a good club. I like it. Oh, yeah. It was really cool. They got all these t-shirts on the ceiling, like, from all the bands that come through. It's really neat. I've, I've got a question for you, Bob, since you're up at the mic. Do I need so, to be lower? <laughs> okay. So, Bob, of course, started Code Zero quite some time ago, and, and you've done a lot for artists. Is there something that artists can do that that make them stand out from the pack when you're looking over submissions or uh, going over things you know people send you stuff what is it that that gives it an it factor for you when you're looking over that stuff uh what a great question yeah recording has to be good first of all i know it's some of your i know some of your pet peeves <laughs> yeah <laughs> what i we'll look talk for later, Bob. <clears throat> i want to know what i look for is uh submission packages that have a complete bio where you came from uh interesting stories of what has happened during your career or whatever like that something that i can talk about on my show and you know something that we could use on social media when we're putting out promo blasts stuff like that so that's what i look for in-depth look at the band i know you also don't you, you don't like it when people don't tag their songs properly with the <laughs> correct metadata i know that's a fact right <laughs> But it's like a little thing like that that can derail, you know. I will kick you to the curb. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Because I'll tell this you is why. His house. <laughs> because the station. <laughs> wow, switcheroo. Yeah. <laughs> it's because, you know, we have a web player and it displays all your metadata. And that has to be correct. Otherwise, it comes out as unknown. And if somebody's tuning into the station for the first time and they see unknown, well, they're not going to gravitate towards that. And uh, what were we talking about? <laughs> Kicking Andy to the curb. Yeah. In his own house. <laughs> the pet plus, peeves you have about Andy kicking yeah. him to the curb in yeah. his own house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and plus, it takes me, if that comes in, like if it's a great song and I got to have it on the station, then I got to do a lot of detective work. Damn. You know, and that takes me 10, 15 minutes because I am slow, you know. Well, I know, I know you're a fan of all three of these bands. Oh, which, yeah. Oh. It, you know what, though? I feel you're paying the, uh, with like the social media tags. When people have a, a tag on Instagram that's different than Facebook, it drives me nuts. Yeah. Oh, because yeah. you got to go back in and, and reassign the tag because you, you don't want them to not have that notification or, right. or that you know exposure in your post. Like, Tagging on yeah. Facebook is a pain. Yeah. yeah. It really is. Uh, yeah. All three bands are great. And I put out a post last week about maybe doing a festival for Code Zero Radio. And you guys all responded in kind so we might have to do like two days because you know i can't cram 10 bands into one day you could try no <laughs> no you can't <laughs> <laughs> no, it'd be better to split that in half yes. I <laughs> kick you to the curb <laughs> the production oh. team will thank you <laughs> i need a sound bite of that yeah <laughs> well so when, when you guys are looking into things like codes or radio i mean where are you trying to, to gain some traction locally as far as outlets if there are any you can think of i mean as the the, the newest band here we're still in that like we'll send this to everybody and anybody i mean are you looking at things that other bands do like okay homebrewed on wapl send that there uh, you know d different there's different things going on there's end of the music with yeah um Rob, and there's a lot of different things. Are you just kind of hitting up as much as you can? Pretty much, it's kind of a kind of a spray and pray, and it's whoever actually responds is uh, kind of the big hurdle right now. Like, because we'll like we'll, we'll send emails to feel like 10, 20 venues in, in a month, and two will get back for something that's going to happen three months from now. Well, I see you're doing uh, tomorrow, um, Mino and the Mayor. Yeah, cool. That, nice. that was that was a pretty quick. Pretty quick turnaround on that one, awesome. yeah. And I don't know, is this something that maybe Jamie Lacey will end up? I mean, would you guys reach out for something like that? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that'd be awesome. I think you kind of alluded to it, um, just like keeping an eye on what other people are doing too, because new things are constantly popping up too, or you know, somebody's trying to get something started, or you know, somebody who's established is finally opening their door to a, a different demographic of people that wasn't necessarily accessible earlier. Yeah. So keeping an eye on like what's going on and you know I, me personally I I really don't care for social media at all but like you can't, like you said you can't not you kind of got to do it yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's brutal. what's the the furthest way you've played at this point uh Denver we've played in Denver um I'm not good at directions <laughs> I don't know we've played in like Minneapolis in Escanaba we just played down in Des Moines Indianapolis whichever of those is furthest away we're getting a good mid midwest loop going nice. yeah that's gotta be a hike yeah I, yeah. I know I know Andrew's yeah. been to De Pere I think I think our furthest was Houghton um, that little house show we did and that's whatever four hours away I think yeah that's probably the furthest we'd have, we've ever done and do you for I mean playing out of state do you realize that like are things just different being an unknown kind of stepping into a, a club for the first time with totally new set of ears and yeah I think there's a different level of um, sort of not pressure but like a different bar to meet when you when you're out that far um does it give you like some clout you wouldn't normally have if you're playing in your hometown? Yeah, possibly. Um, you know, I sweet it, talk from Green Bay, Wisconsin. <laughs> <laughs> where? 
<laughs> you know, where, where the are Packers your play? Heads? Yeah, where the Packers play. <laughs> no, I, I mean, looking at it like that, like you know, there's a whole different crowd of people to sort of win over that you haven't played board before, for sure. Um, but also, like if you're looking at it from a business as- aspect, like you have to go out there and win them over to cover your expenses. Um, Because you don't want to go that far and come home with less money than you started out with. Right. You want to at least, you know, be able to pay for your gas in your hotel if you had to book a hotel, you know. So anything else is a bonus. (laughs) Right. When you're doing that, do you have any problem with slumming it, as they would say? Um, No. I mean, we really haven't had to so far. We've been lucky in that sense. Um, I think a lot of things you need to have in place before you go out that far like you need to have a decent merch set up um you need to be able to take money in all forms if you can mm-hmm. a lot of people will come up to you and be like ah, i don't have any cash or all i have is card um so you need to be able to to take any form of payment if you're mm-hmm. if you possibly can because there have been times where it's like okay we sold a t-shirt and that t-shirt you know made or break this gig you know we can you know get we've covered our expense to get to the next gig and any amount of merch that you can sell on the road is is going to really alleviate any of that pressure that is such great advice being able to take all forms of payment like i think it's one of those things you don't think about until it's like time to take payments again it's like it's (laughs) learning it's learning how to do this the hard way you know i mean you're in that situation it's like man we could have we could have sold a few things of merch and we didn't because we couldn't take card or we mm-hmm. couldn't take Venmo or you know any sort of digital payment but you also have to have some decent merch to be able to get to that point too if yeah, anybody yeah. wants your merch you need yeah. a good setup is there any particular merch that seems to do better than others I mean it, it seems like shirts yeah. always kind of yeah you can't go. go wrong with a t-shirt mm-hmm. um, for us hats have done really well like baseball hats and beanies yeah you guys have done quite a extensive we have a lot of merch. Selection. Yeah, um, our drummer's dad works for a company that does screen printing and stuff. So we, you know, we get to look at everything and be like, "Oh, this would be neat," you know. And our right. prices are pretty decent for that, so we're lucky in that regard. That's another whole aspect of relationships that you kind of have to set up to if you're looking to do this long term. Is like you need, you need to have some go-to people to to set you up with merch if you have, you know, certain business people that you like to constantly head up for getting t-shirts made or hats or whatever like you want to have somebody who's going to who's going to be good to you and, and vice versa um because again like you, you know you want to find your right price point with all the merch so that you can afford to cover what you put into it and then some mm-hmm. i know you two are playing a show together soon sweet talk and trash yeah. pandas yeah. you want to tell us about that show um, well, we are the two openers, and then we have 20 Watt Tombstone and Hillbilly Casino. Um, I haven't gotten to play with either of them yet, so that's pretty exciting. Um, that's going to be at Appleton Beer Factory. Uh, what date is that? Do you remember the date? Uh, May 18th. May 18th. Yeah, nice. Are you hearing something? <laughs> I have no idea. I'm getting ready to kick you to the curb. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what that is, but I don't like it. Uh, and... Andrew, you've got a show uh, coming up at the Epic Center. Sure do. Yeah, opening up for Tim Montana and St. Sonia. Cool. That's nice. kind of our, our big one of the year. Um, and I have all my solo stuff that we're still planning out for the summer. And that's been, it's been a cool avenue just to get out and play, if, especially in the summertime when the other guys can't always make it. It's my, my little vice that I still get to play at least. Well, we've got a uh, comment here from Brenda Minter. Uh, I'm looking forward to adding all of your band shirts to my collection. Yeah. Also, nice. also, I can't wait to see you live this summer. Awesome. Sweet. We appreciate you. Yeah, Thanks, Brenda. <laughs> Thank you, Brenda. Is there a, a festival or a venue that you guys would love to play that you haven't yet? Um, I know at one point we wanted to play South by Southwest, but I think that's slowly changing into something else. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. We, we, I think we're just grateful to have any show that people are at that appreciate us being there and are actively listening. Because that's a whole that's a whole another thing is when you you know playing in this area like you're bound to play some shows that not everyone you don't have everyone's direct attention. Oh yeah, they're just at yeah. the bar, you know, to you're, be at the bar, not to see the show. You're just so. background music. Yep. <laughs> yeah. When you play your first show and everyone has you, you have everyone's direct attention. Oh. It's yeah. kind of a step back. You're like that's. 
and that was really cool about playing Mile of Music Festival last year. You know, everybody's there for the music, so that was, you know... But now, <laughs> that wasn't your standard, like, uh, listening session room, though, right? <laughs> no, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> and Jamie and Andrew, you guys haven't played Mile of Music yet at this point? Not yet. No, we Did. submitted ourselves. Just waiting. It'd be super cool. I've worked it a whole bunch. Never played. Well, hopefully things like it. Like the Bammy for you know male vocalists, you think that that kind of thing for for what it is it would at least maybe open some doors to maybe some opportunities that weren't available prior. It would have to be a back door for us. <laughs> 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 um, I did, we all really appreciate what they do for for Appleton for sure, and it's a it's a very I've gone to it a few times. It's a very cool fest, but I understand that we may not exactly fit in with with people are looking for there. Um, but yeah, it's that's cool. What do you guys, or have you done in the past, or what, would you ever do a band collaboration, a live track, and then, or not a live track, but you go in the studio and like pick people from the area to yeah. to do a track with? Oh man, that could oh, be yeah. cool. Uh, I think it'd be fun. Yeah. You make like a bucket list and just start like, I always think like we are the world. <laughs> like, oh, nobody yeah. nobody, nobody <laughs> would care Welcome outside day. of like a 20 mile radius of, of the Fox Cities, but it would be like a huge deal to everybody around here. Get thirty musicians and and do something like that. That'd be sick. All right. Well, we're we're near the end of the show. So, what is a, a piece of advice that you can give to somebody that is looking to start? And you, you said so many great things during the show that I think people can walk away with. But is there one thing that you would suggest to somebody looking to start a band or get into the the music scene in this area? As as big picture as this sounds, do it. Like if you if, if you have the idea to start a band, if the, if you have that little nugget in your brain telling you that this might be a good idea, do it. Um, I, I've I, I put together my first band when I was in seventh grade, and I think about where I am today. Like just the amount of life lessons I've learned through starting a band, um, that obviously helping me grow as a musician, but just the the life experience you get in leading and collaborating with other people. Um, honing in on a skill you have, getting in front of people, learning how to talk and interact with other humans, how to be decent on the internet. Like, the amount of lessons you get out of just being in a band, just, like, go for it. Like, that's that's the biggest piece of advice I have. And have an accurate stage point. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like a sound guy talking. Yeah, yeah a little bit. It comes out every once in a while. Um, I guess for me, I would say, like, don't get discouraged like there's gonna be a lot of challenges um you're probably gonna end up with a different band than you first started with and that's not necessarily a bad thing you know i'm the only original member in this band at this point and uh every time that you know we have added somebody new it, it's gotten better we've gotten tighter and um overall like you know, if you're hearing no from venues or you're not hearing anything from venues, you got to just, just keep trying because, you know, for a while, nobody's going to care about you because nobody's going to know who you are. But eventually, if, if you keep going, um, my my boyfriend always says uh, the, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. Just don't <laughs> leave him alone and eventually you'll get a shot at it. So, like, if you really want it, um, you just got to work. You got to do a lot of work, but it's worth it. Yeah. Uh, I think anything I'm gonna say is just gonna echo what you guys have already said. I mean, I think, I think you need to if you're if you're gonna do it, which if you're thinking about doing, it, you should do it. And if you find people to do it with you, make sure you are on absolutely on the same page, not just artistically, but you know, manage your own expectations. And if you're gonna reach for something really high, you are probably gonna have to make some hard choices. Um, you know, just in every aspect you know how you devote your time and even down to songwriting like you, you need to make some hard choices um so yeah just just make sure you're on the same page with things any uh, gigs or anything you want to plug before the end of the show or where can people go to find out more the world wide web yeah <laughs> that's a great place to start we love the internet <laughs> we, we do yeah yeah Things we do <laughs> Um, you can get to talk uh, the easiest ways, honestly, through Facebook right now. It's all caps, T-U-K, Tuck Music is kind of the big thing that's throwing people off. Um, Tuck Band Official gets you to our merch. And then I think can help divide you 
into any direction that you need to gear us in. Yeah. Um, I mean, every link that we have for everything is on trashpandasrock.com. Um, if you're looking for us, we have an S at the end of pandas. There is a, <laughs> There are two southern bands called Trash Panda. And so, yeah, look for us. Also, we're the only one with a female, I think. So that also <laughs> helps. Nice. Um, as far as shows coming up, we're excited to play Bratfest this year. That's something new for us. So, uh, yeah, that's, I believe, the 24th of May. So that should be fun. Um, yeah, you can, any of Sweet Talk stuff, you can find on Facebook, Instagram. Um, it's one word, one T. Uh, not, <laughs> not two words, two T. One word, push the words together. Um, we have uh, that show with Trash Pandas um, and Hillbilly Casino in 20 Watt um, on May 18th at Appleton Beer Factory. Oh, wow. That, yeah, that venues, be Appleton warm. Beer Factory. That's a great venue. It's yeah. so good there, yeah. yeah. It's going to be a burner of a show. Um, and then the next week uh, on May 24th, we're going to be in Green Bay at, uh, at the Tracks for a show. Um, and then earlier in the day, we're going to be on Channel 5 doing like a couple of songs on the air. Hell yeah. So, yeah. That's good. Yeah. We'll so, so much ground we could cover. Like, it, it, you're live at 5. Uh, yeah. They're yeah. just yeah. amazing, too, with the, the stuff they've been putting on. And I think... Um, I'm gonna butcher her name, Melania or Melania, but it's something. Melania. Something Melania. I think. I don't know. They're, they're both gonna be uh, presenting an award at the Wyoming this year, so that's pretty cool. Oh, that's awesome. good for them. Yeah. Cool. Well, I want to thank you guys for for doing this. It's kind of, you know, a, a different thing. I enjoyed yeah. enjoyed all the input, and hope you guys will come back if we do something like this again, or maybe we'll do drummers or something. So it's, it's there you go. <laughs> no, oh, man, get three drummers in a room. There's so many jokes there. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, as always, any parting words? No, just thanks for having us. Yeah, this is, this is really yeah, cool. this was this a is, lot of fun. This is honestly what usually happens at the end of the gig, like when you have one person from each band on the bill, and like yeah. you just end up small talking, and it's all about the same things. So. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, what gigs are you playing? How are you doing your merch? Oh, that was cool. Yeah. Yeah. Really? yeah. <laughs>